here only go through today. We'll, we'll see how far we can get. I'll let you know on Wednesday exactly the material. Will this be like the last semester where it's open now? Oh, yeah, it's always open. Study for it like it's closed. and they're going to have read lines and write lines and enable lines. And a lot of those control variables are going to have bars over them, which means that things are active low. Is that okay? All right. So I'm going to take the output of this guy, Q, and oh, I'm going to bring it back around to that gate. So you notice that we got some feedback going on here. And I'm going to take the output of this bottom one, which I haven't labeled yet, and I'm going to um, call that, well, it's going to come up to the top gate. Everybody all right? Okay, so let's come up with a truth table for this thing here. So here's S bar, R bar. Here is Q, and here's our, our mystery one right there. Okay, so what are the possibilities for the the S bar and the R bar? How many do they have? Two. Oh, four. Between the four. There's two variables there, so I got okay, so I'm gonna put this in a slightly different form here. Is that alright? I'm gonna go with zero one here. So the S bar is low. Reset bar line is high. The 
these are NAND gates, correct? We just discussed that you take any input to a NAND gate, drop it low, what's the output do? Uh, so let's put these on there. Got a zero here and a one here. So what's Q going to be? <coughs> Why? It got an input low, right? So this is going to be one here. Is that okay? What is this input? One. What's this input? One. Why? Because that's Q, correct? So what's this guy? Zero. Oh, zero. So what do I have up here? Zero. Oh, cool, right? So now I got both those inputs low. The output surely ought to be what? Right. Wonderful. Okay. Well, what did you notice about my mystery? It's what? Zero. Zero. <laughs> okay. Well, now let me do this. Let me go one zero. So I'm going to take the set bar, it's going to be high, reset bar is going to be low. So I'm putting a low here and a high here. What can you tell me about what's going on? Q is low. Q is zero. Why? You don't know just yet. What's this guy? My question mark. It's a one. Why? Because I've got a zero here, correct? That's one. So what's this guy up here? One. What is Q? Zero. Is that okay? So already you ought to be able to figure out that I can call this guy Q bar. Correct? It's the opposite of what the Q is. Okay. So do you understand that taking this guy low sets this device, makes Q a 1. Taking the reset low, making it active, does what? Resets the thing to a zero. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Now, just for grins, we're in this state here. So what have I got? Zero, one. And I'm going to take this line here, and I'm going to take it back high. What happens? What's Q? Zero. First of all, let's let's this is a what? A one and this is a one? Mm -hmm. But what was Q? It was a zero. What do I have here? What do I have out here? Any input low, the output is high. What do I have here? Have here? One. What's Q? Did anything change? Okay. So how long will it stay in that state as long as I make the both those input lines, the set bar and the reset bar, if I keep them high? Stay there forever. Right? Okay. Well, let me do something interesting now. Let me go to a zero one. Do you know what's going to happen? We've already discussed it. We already did it. Pardon? We already did it. We already did it. So what's the output going to be? One zero. One zero. Do you understand? Active low. We're setting it. One zero. I, I should have filled that in. That was still zero. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Now, let me raise that set bar line up high. I go back to one one. What happens? It stays at one zero. It stays at one zero. Interesting. 
What have I made? The one that's like, I don't care. Oh, you, we haven't, we got to get to that one. <laughs> we care about it. <laughs> okay. We'll do hangman. I give you big hints. What have we made? The register. Yes. Give me another one. Drives. stay there until what happens? <clears throat> until the new input comes in, or reset input comes in. Or the power goes out. <laughs> right? You understand? This is what's called a volatile memory. You lose power, it goes away. What's examples <clears throat> of non-volatile Drive. Okay, what, how is a hard drive? Now, we're not talking a solid state drive. How is the information stored in a hard drive? <coughs> Magnetic field. So do you understand that you have some chunk, you got um, a chunk of tape here, perhaps, or whatever, or magnetic medium, and you've got a bunch of little dipoles that can be arranged, you know, any direction, but you can polarize them so that you can make that north and south, or you can make the next little domain south north, right? And it will stay polarized like that. I mean, you've taken probably at some point in your life and magnetized a piece of iron by putting a coil of wire around it, running the current through it, and even though you remove the, the current from the coil, the little uh, Iron nail will still maintain some magnetism, still pick up paper clips. Yes, no? Okay. So we this will persist almost forever. Okay. So we can store zeros and ones in magnetic domains. So magnetic tape, uh, the card reader on the back, or the, the magnetic strip on the back of your credit card. It's all that information is being stored in magnetic domains. Volatile, non-volatile memory. Non-volatile. You don't have to have power to your credit card, do you? So okay, you don't have to have power to your hard drive, right? I mean, what would happen if you unplugged your computer? You'd like not all your information to go away, right? So that's not. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just by which way you polarize it. Whether you've got a, a field going north south or south north. Okay. You can associate whatever you want with that. You've heard uh, the term core memory. Yes. Okay. Those used to be little magnetic, little donuts of, of material about the size of, oh, the head of a pin, and they could magnetize those with the flux going either that way or the flux going that way, again, being one being a zero, the other direction being a one. But you can imagine how that takes up a, a fair chunk of real estate to make. These things were small, but I mean, relatively speaking, it takes up a large amount of real estate. <clears throat> okay, uh, but it, that was a lot faster than doing magnetic. <coughs> All right, so we've made ourselves a memory cell here. Everybody okay with that? So if I want to write a one to that, what's my procedure? Well, what happened? What do I want to do if I want to keep whatever is there there? One one. If I want to write a one. 
put a zero where? Set bar. Set bar. Okay? And then I bring that back up to a 1-1 one, one state. If I want to write a zero, you want to take the set reset bar line. Does it not depend on which one you're Pardon? Or does it not depend on which one you're referring to? Like, how do you know that the zero you're writing refers to S being zero or S being one? Because I'm going to label the output as Q and the other one as Q bar. And then that determines. But could Q bar not be used to store memory, or is it Q that stores the memory? You get both. You understand? You can store the ones, but you automatically get the opposite ones. Gotcha, for the other. Okay, so yeah. one determines the other one as well. Yes. So could you repeat it again? One one stores the One one is the steady, is, is the leave it like it is. If you wrote a one in there, it stays a one. If you wrote a zero, it stays a zero. Doing okay? And then the one zero. Is you mean? Going this way, one zero. Mm -hmm. One zero resets it. The, the reset is active low, so if you take it low, that puts a one, excuse me, it puts a zero into Q, puts a one into Q bar. Doing all right? Okay. Uh, there's a state that we haven't talked about. Zero, zero. What happens now? Exactly. Any input low on a NAND gate, what happens? So, 1, 1. Well, that's screwy. One's called Q and the other one's called Q bar. Well, they ain't, right? Will this burn the thing up? Absolutely not. It's perfectly okay. But what's going to happen when you raise it up to the hold it memories to a 1-1? One, one? You have no idea. You have zero idea whether a Q is going to be a 1 or Q is going to be a 0. No idea. It's going to depend upon which of the gates is a little bit slower than the other and which one dominates. So you have no idea. So this guy here is an illegal state. If you ever use one of these set bar, reset bar flip-flops, you as the user of it better make sure that you never write a zero zero, because you're just not going to know how the answer is going to come out. Doing all right? Okay. If I wanted to make this a set reset flip-flop, where it makes more kind of intuitive sense to you so that if you take the set line high, then, or the reset line high and the appropriate thing happens on Q and Q bar, what should we do? Yeah, here, what I have made is a set bar reset flip-flop like this. If I wanted to make a flip-flop that was um, set, reset, what do you suppose I ought to do? How would I make that? No. A regular AND gate? No. We're running out of gates. A who? Pardon? Yeah. All you got to do is in, put an invert gate on the front there, and that will work. But then, what state do you want those in when you're trying to just maintain the memory? Zero, zero. Correct? So on this set bar reset, we keep these lines high in order to keep our memory where we want it. Doing okay? All right. Um, okay, we can make another type of flip-flop, and this is going to be called a JK flip-flop.